cremation, in recent years, is becoming an increasingly widespread practice, and is performed in the various authorized structures, therefore, equipped with crematory ovens. It is a very ancient practice. Some cultures believe that fire was a purifying agent and that cremation illuminated the passage of the dead to another world or prevented their return to the living. The ancient Egyptians instead convinced supporters of another afterlife forbade cremation as it did not allow the transmigration of the soul. According to them, the body of a deceased had to be preserved. Many people mistakenly believe that choosing to be cremated excludes the possibility of having a funeral. This is not the case as cremation does not interfere with the organization of a traditional funeral. As for burial, cremation also requires the preparation of all necessary documents, including the certificate of the necropsy doctor, which excludes the hypothesis of death caused by a crime or the authorization of the public prosecutor in the event violent, sudden, or suspected death. To prepare the body for cremation, some devices, such as pacemakers and hearing aids, are removed before the process as they could explode during combustion, thus damaging the oven. The cremation coffins are made of raw wood, i.e. not treated with paints or chemicals. To know in detail what happens to the body after death and once buried, I leave you the video above. I will explain all the various stages in the decomposition of the body and what changes occur over time. How is a crematory oven made and how does it work? The crematorium oven generally comprises two superimposed chambers separated by a grid of refractory material, i.e. a material capable of withstanding high temperatures for long periods without chemically reacting with the other materials with which it is in contact. Some examples are refractory mortar, aluminum oxides, and silica. The oven can heat up with different types of combustion, for example. By heating the walls of the oven with electric resistances or gas burners. In contact with direct flame. Thanks to a ventilation system, air is continuously introduced and therefore the oxygen necessary for combustion. In the first phase of the cremation, the coffin, coffin covered by the pall, is introduced into the upper part of the crematorium. The coffin slides into the oven through metal guides and immediately catches fire. The oven chamber is then immediately sealed, thanks to a metal door. Very high temperatures are reached, around 900 slash 1000 degrees. The first to be attacked by fire are the hair, skin, and muscles, while the soft tissues vaporize. During the whole process, gases are generated, which are expelled through an exhaust system. And at the same time, the air is purified of unwanted odors. In the second phase, these remains of the calcified bones are collected in trays and left to cool. Once cold, they are separated using special magnets from possible metal elements, such as nails, coffin handles, and any dental and joint processes of the deceased. The finest fragments are then eliminated through a vibrating sieve, keeping only those remains which will then undergo a very last phase of treatment. The cremation process then ends in the cremulator, a particular device, created precisely to pulverize the fragments of bones that are still present after the combustion phase. In this way, it is possible to identify the actual ashes to be collected in order to then seal them inside an urn, which will then be delivered to the relatives. 
Cremation produces in an adult ashes equal to about 3.5% of his body weight. In the case of a baby, the percent drops to 2.5%, up to 1% in the case of a fetus. Contrary to popular belief, cremation does not reduce the dead to ashes. What remains are actually the bone remains that are crushed and then reduced to ashes. Cremation times are approximately 1-2 hours and vary according to the temperature of the oven, the size of the coffin, and the stature of the deceased person. During the whole cremation process, the operator can check the progress through the peephole placed on the metal door. Relatives can also attend the cremation and often they are the ones who press the oven start button. The basic principle is that the dispersion of the ashes of the corpse authorized by the registrar on the basis of the express will of the deceased does not constitute a crime. Furthermore, the dispersion of the ashes must take place only in areas specifically intended for this purpose within cemeteries or in nature or in private areas with the prior written consent of the owner. They can also be dispersed into the sea as long as it is at least 100 meters from the shore and in sections free from boats and artifacts. The same rule applies to rivers and lakes, and in all cases, the dispersal must be authorized by the municipality. In the event that these indications are not respected, a crime is committed, and there is a risk of imprisonment from two months to one year and a hefty fine.